uh, they would kick us off. I guess they didn't want to actually have all those viewers. Um, but uh, Live Leak reached out to us a few years ago for our Bilderberg coverage and said, we'll give you the streams you need. So we'll have Live Leak coverage uh, from Austria with our three reporters if they're able to get in uh, there on some of the uh, InfoWars channels that are on Live Leak. In fact, we should probably today go to some of those channels and give people those addresses, but they'll be embedded at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And uh, Hayden is involved uh, in the TV production as well uh, over in the UK, and I appreciate uh, him coming on. Live Leak is a UK-based video sharing website that lets users post and share videos. F founded in October of 2006 by uh, a team responsible for the Orgish.com shock site, it aims to take reality footage, politics, war, and other world events and combine them with the power of citizen journalism. LiveLeak.com. What I like is they haven't censored us. Um, I mean, we wouldn't even be putting anything profane or violent up on some of the other streaming sites, and it was like government or something would have them shut us down. Uh, and it happened over and over again with other services. we finally gotten to a point where YouTube isn't censoring us too much. I think that's because they're in competition now with Facebook video that's starting to rise. But uh, it's good to have independent groups out there. Uh, Hayden, uh, thank you for coming on with us, liveleak.com. Uh, I know you're read up on the attacks on free speech globally, TPP, and more. Uh, but first off, for folks that don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about your worldview and what you think is happening right now on the planet. Um, well, it, you kind of have to use your language carefully a lot of the time, but it's quite simple that where TPP and TTIP are concerned, what we're looking at is a corporate takeover of sovereign nations. There's no other way. To put it, if you boil it down, that's all it is. Our sovereign nations are going to hand over their ability to rule themselves to corporations, willingly. It's incredible. Wow, your, your uh, Skype is amazing. Is it? Oh, good. <laughs> Usually for us and for the show, it doesn't work at all, so I'm very pleased it's working now. Well, fantastic. You're involved not just in Live League that you co-founded. Uh, you produce other shows and things. I mean, let's face it, you're kind of battle on the New World Order, aren't you? In our own little way, um, I am a director of a very small media company. We provide services to small, medium businesses who can't traditionally afford those sort of services. Uh, we're even trying to get um, a campaign up and running for that. But on the side, because we have this equipment, this knowledge, we've decided that we need to reach out to people like Richie Allen, who is one of the first shows, um, and help people who are passionate about these sort of things. and who have a belief in something, whether we agree personally or not, completely irrelevant, much like Lively, um, and provide them with a platform to be heard. Um, well, that's I true renaissance, though. Just providing a medium for true censorship-free freedom, that ends up helping almost every time. Yeah, I mean, as, as long as it's legal and doesn't encourage doing people actual harm, sure. um, whether I agree or not, like I say, it's completely irrelevant. I don't have to agree with people to support them. Uh, seems in this day and age, there's a lot of you're with us or against us sort of thing. But uh, I support people I disagree with almost constantly. But isn't that what it's about? If, if you don't, you're playing somebody else's game. Well, that's a classically liberal view, the opposite of these modern liberal and conservative paradigm. Uh, let's get into TPP and, and, and now new documents from WikiLeaks. It's even worse than we thought. All of our private data... Uh, just just turned over to multinationals. These corporations are really arrogant. I mean, how do they think they're going to get away with this long term, ruling us from secret? Because our, <laughs> air quotes, leaders uh, will, will allow it. Powerful lobbyists have been working on this for a long time. Let's, let's be honest. Um, everybody's favorite alternative news uh, kicking boys, Monsanto. They tried to release certain products in Europe and they were told no. Unusually, there was no fight. It just backed off because they know TTIP's coming and they can just sue the hell out of nations until nations can't afford it. By the time people realize what this actually means, because it's such a, let's face it, for, for the mainstream viewer, it's an incredibly dull sounding topic, isn't it? Especially when you've got Bruce Jenner in the news with his smashing new pair of breasts. <laughs> Much more interesting than TPP. Um, and by the time people realize, like most of this type of legislation and a lot of the creeping, horrific legislation we've got coming around the corner in the UK, 
it, it's too late. And generally, people are quite apathetic now. Man, you ought to do a show of your own. I mean, I know you do some. You got a great radio voice and also a great brain when it comes down to this because you're just calmly laying out in like a minute or two what I've been screaming about, you know, for hours. Yeah, but but I get upset. It's so or Orwellian and surreal that foreign it's mega corporations can be trying to make my life go under them, and I can't even see what they're secretly doing. And the mainstream media acts like that's okay. I mean, that is just crazy. Where do you think they're going to go next if they get away with this? Well, Alex, here's the thing. It's not even not to contradict. It's not even really Orwellian. It, it's more Huxley. It is, yeah. They're making it seem like a wonderful thing. And people are going, oh, that's nice. You're right. That's it is what... Huxley. Because Huxley, it's making tyranny look sexy. That's what it's all it's about. Tyranny. 1984, you know it's tyranny. They're protecting us, Alex. They're protecting us from people that hate our freedoms. Luckily, those people shouldn't hate us much longer because we don't have a hell of a lot of freedoms left. Yeah, Bush always said they attack us because they hate our freedom. Then why are they attacking our freedom? Why is the government killing our freedom? Yeah, well, because they want everyone to love us. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's how they sell everything now, isn't it? We'll protect you from terrorists. Don't worry, we'll touch you at the airport. We're protecting you from terrorists. We're going to read all your emails. We're protecting you from terrorists. Everything we do. No, you don't need freedom. You don't need freedom because we're protecting you from terrorists. Alex, I come out my house every day. I go to a corner shop, but there's an Asian guy there. Never blown up once. I've not seen a single member of the Taliban or ISIS on my road. And I don't think it's because we're fighting them over there. Or because the government have taken my freedoms. It's just this sale of fear so they can grab everything we've got that's ours. Well, that's it. And then trying to create a real radical threat, they fund ISIS and other groups. Here's the headline from yesterday. Uh, U.S. now claims Assad working with ISIS, Infowars.com. U.S. changes narrative after Pentagon report proves ISIS to be Western-backed. And then the U.S. Embassy tweeted, reports indicate the regime of Assad is making airstrikes in support of ISIL, the Islamic State of ISIS, against Aleppo, aiding extremists against Syrian population. That is, that is, to that is Orwellian. That is war is peace. I mean, that is crazy. Anyone with a pair of eyes can see that Assad and ISIS have really gotten along well over the years. Uh, <laughs> it, it just you know, people are going to read this. It's like when, when the, this, the situation in Syria first really got going. And um, we were being sold the narrative through the media that it's Assad, uh, the bad guy, fair enough, not the nicest of rulers. And it was a popular uprising. Let's arm the, these aren't the extreme extremists. These are the not quite so extreme extremists. These are our friends. We helped create ISIS and we empowered them. And we were being sold this narrative that they were the good guys. And on Live Leak, very early in the conflict, we started getting a lot of footage, which very clearly spelled out that there were no good guys in this conflict. Uh, and now, look at what it's grown into. And we've had people like Tony Blair, the Middle East peace envoy, um, saying, no, we didn't. We, we, we're not responsible for, uh, for ISIS. <laughs> yeah, of course we are. Well, I even predicted two years ago, before they even made up the name ISIS out of Al-Qaeda, that when they were done, they would claim that Assad was with the bad rebels, which are the majority of the rebels. And now they've done it. I mean, <laughs> ISIS, the Salafists, Al-Qaeda, same group through Saudi Arabia, have been trying to overthrow Assad for five years, who is a reformer compared to his dad. He's not an angel, but compared to ISIS, he is. People can live in peace, all different religions. You know, they're wearing suits and ties. You can listen to whatever music you want. You can get a beer. Uh, I mean, that's more freedom than what we see under these, these crazy people. And they've got the <laughs> nerve now to... I, I just can't believe that our government is now saying Assad is with ISIS. That, that, the, do you think they're testing to see if we're dumb, or, or will people buy this? I think they know people, I, I, A, when they're sat at home in the comfort of the chair, like, you know, in the UK, watching Britain's Got Talent. The biggest story in the newspapers last week was that a dog won a talent show. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't care. You're sat at home. Your life's okay. Remember, most people, TPP, they won't even notice it until it really gets its teeth in or tea tip. They won't really notice it. Their lives will kind of continue on a groove. I mean, it's not that the sheep. Most people want to get up, go to work, go home, spend time with the family, like I'm sure you do, I know I do. But they, you don't tend to think generationally. I'm, I'm terrified. I've got a three-year-old son. I'm terrified that he's going to grow up in a world which has been spelled out by our, our dear leader over here in the UK. We can't say anything. Oh, we yeah, tell folks it. about Cameron's latest 
statement oh. that is Orwellian. I mean, I mean, I mean, the quote is so insane. And this is the best part. Okay, I, I, I can't quote exactly. I don't have it in front. We of can me, pull but it up. But, yeah. Um, essentially, they're going to clamp down on non-violent extremism. Non-violent. Ask them what it is. The kind of vague. But one example he gave, and if this isn't terrifying, I don't know what is. 9-11 conspiracy theories are an example of something that could lead people to terrorism. Now, I think, personally, he's making quite a leap there, because I, I don't think it's good. But even if it did, if one or two people turn to terrorism after religiously following 9-11 conspiracy theory websites and the like, is that worth criminalizing the millions of people who are interested in the topic? Here's what they're going to do in the UK. They will take away your right to use the internet. Essentially, if you, want, if you get one of these banning orders for being a non-violent extremist, if you want to use Twitter, it has to go through the police. And you won't be allowed to tell anyone why all of a sudden you've changed dramatically online. Um, or, or why your tweets have been written by, you know, a Tim Pop fascist police officer. Um, and even better, the prospect, and, and this is amazing, that you could be arrested and tried without necessarily being told what it is you've done. Now, I know I've read a book about that, quite a famous one. I'm sure you have. And it appears David Cameron and his people did too. And thought, Let me read the quote to folks. And, 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 and here's the problem. I'm too close to this, and so are you being somebody who's informed, um, Hayden. But we're, we're here saying things that 50 years ago, 20 years ago, would have been heralding the end of freedom, the end of the West, the end of, of, of free speech. His, I mean, they're saying that if you say 9-11 was a cover-up, you're aiding terrorists. Well, no, you're not. You're saying the government's aiding terrorists, which is actually coming out. So they're saying, and, and I've already been harassed in the UK by police when I'm just out interviewing people, asking me what I'm doing. So, so they've already been getting this ready and protest bans downtown, the rest of it. And now he's saying, quote, for too long, we have been passively tolerant society saying to our citizens, as long as you obey the law, we will leave you alone. It's often meant we have stood neutral between different values. And that's helped foster a narrative of extremism and grievance. And then if you go on to the full quote, the government will conclusively turn the page on this failed approach. That, that's Magna Carta, folks. As the party of one nation, talk about a cult, we are one nation. Uh, we will govern as one nation, that means you'll do what they say, bring our country together, that means actively promoting certain values. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, democracy, the rule of law, equal rights regardless of race, gender, or sexuality. And, and then later in the quote, because it's a long speech, he says, we will no longer tolerate criticism of the government. Let me see where it says that. The government will challenge those who seek to spread hatred and intelligence by forming a new partnership of every person and organization, uh, that's common purpose, in this country that wants to defeat the extremists. The proposal around the response, and, and then he just goes in, and then you read him say, we will no longer tolerate uh, you know, people saying hateful things. Well, that sounds nice, except they then mean 9-11 conspiracy theorists. Go ahead. Not, not just that. Um, when they say hateful things... It's probably not my definition of hateful. It's their definition of hateful. It's so vaguely worded that when challenged, uh, members of government, I mean, let's be honest, politicians will never give you an answer anyway about anything. But they, they just simply don't know. Just, these blanket laws, of course, people like SEP, because all newspapers like the Daily Mail, saying, well, pretty much, it's for your own safety. It's for your own good. We will live in this utopian dream world of everyone being nice. You never, ever got rid of any problem by brushing it under the carpet. You do that so long before there's big lumps in the carpet. You know, you sure, just but look who they're trying to shut up. Folks that want to criticize the EU. People that want to call for sovereignty. People that don't like GMO. That's who they want to go after, not even the radical Islamicists. They're going to use that threat to take everybody else's freedom. That's always been the plan. Yeah, and it goes right through society, the National Union of Students, which is always, see, I, it's tricky because I am definitely very liberal, but perhaps not a liberal by the modern sense of the word. Sure. But the National Union of Students has always been extremely left. But recently, they wouldn't condemn ISIS because that would be racist, although I'm not entirely sure what race ISIS is, but that would be racist. So we can't condemn ISIS for that. 
but we can condemn Israel because that's not racist. Um, we can also condemn gay men for co-opting uh, expressions used by black females. We can definitely condemn that, but we can't condemn the guys doing the raping and the murdering. So it's all this. It really is the definition of political correctness gone mad, a phrase that's often used very poorly. But this is definitely being used. That's right. It's all selectively enforced. Of course. Of course it is. They're, they're milking it for everything it's worth. The, the government have seen a tremendous in, aided by people's irrational fear of bearded lunatics in sandals exploding everywhere. And the current zeitgeist of thinking amongst um, our younger people and their leaders. Well, after World War II, the British and the whole U the UK refused to carry ID cards and said it was Nazi Germany. And when Hitler was bombing the UK, bombing London, people didn't, you know, give up and say, let's give in. I mean, if there were real terrorists blowing us up every day, it's still not as dangerous as automobiles. We don't get rid of cars because they're dangerous. I mean, this idea that because somebody's threatening to bomb us, we change our whole way of life, that, that, that's just ridiculous. It even goes back even more recently than World War II, when, when the, the troubles with the IRA were at the peak in this country. British security services went to the government saying, we want way more far-reaching powers. We want to be able to get everyone. And the governments at the time, across all parties, said, oh, no, we can't do that. We, we, we can't do that. That, that. That's what they want. So effectively, the war on terror is now lost. If there was ever such a thing, it's lost. The terrorists have won without destroying one of our major cities. They've won because we're frantically handing over freedoms at a ridiculous rate and handing over our countries to corporations. I, I, I never thought there'd be anyone I trusted less or any body I trusted less than politicians to rule us. But there are. There are corporations. Secret um, corporations. Secret agreements. Hayden Hewitt. Co part. Arbitration. Absolutely. Secret. Final segment come up, or, or perhaps some overdrive. LiveLeak.com. Hayden Hewitt. I want to get him back on in the very near future. We're going to give you some more of those David Cameron quotes when we come back. Well, I want to have Hayden Hewitt, the co-founder of LiveLeak.com, back on in the very near future. He's a great interview, really smart guy. I'm going to be out in the UK in a few months working on a big story. Maybe I can come by his offices and check out what they're doing. There's been a lot of exciting things. They'll be with us for five more minutes into overdrive, but the main transmission is going to be over soon. Nightly news is tonight, 7 o'clock. I did find the full quote uh, in his speech from the British Prime Minister just two weeks ago. For far too long, this is in his speech, uh, we have been passively tolerant society, saying to our citizens, as long as you obey the law, we will leave you alone. It's often meant we have stood neutral between different values, and that's helped foster a narrative of extremism and grievance. This government will conclusively turn the page on this failed approach. And even the liberal guardian breaks this down. Because this will be used on conservatives and libertarians and everybody else for that matter. Designed to restrict those trying to uh, radicalize young people, they claim it's for radical Muslims, it's, it's not, is to be included in the Queen's speech. David Cameron will tell the National Security Council on Wednesday. Any activities that are, quote, the high court will rule, harmful activities of an extremist individual, which they define, the definition of harmful is to include a risk of public disorder, or a risk of harassment, alarm, or distress. You know, saying the government's behind terror attacks, that's pretty distressing. A threat to the functioning of democracy. They would include a ban on broadcasting and a requirement to submit to the police, is what he just talked about, in advance any proposed publication. That is the true form of censorship, prior restraint. On the web and social media or in print. The bill will also contain plans for banning orders for extremist organizations. Yeah, like Michael Savage can't come to the U.K., or even guys that just teach self-defense, famous, you know, Navy SEALs and stuff can't go there you, because they're trying to ban. In fact, they just had the police come out this week. I meant to cover it on Monday. It was in the news and say, because they asked the police in a public forum, is any self-defense OK? And they said, no, it's all illegal. Only a rape alarm, a panic alarm, a horn is OK. I, I mean, why do you think the UK out of all countries wants this docile population? What's going on, Live Leak co-founder Hayden Hewitt? I, I think that the thing about the, the rape alarm was kind of taking a touch out of context, to be fair. I think it's about that's what weapon, you can't carry weapons in this country. I mean, just recently, I think it was Manchester or Salford, which is an adjoining city, a guy stabbed a burglar to death and, you know, it was, it was considered self-defense. Good. So, I, I think there's a little bit of clickbaiting 
and selective reporting involved there. Um, but, the, but the big thing with what you just spoke about there, do you remember when people were first concerned about the amount of surveillance where our security services were spying on your people, your security services were spying on our people, and thereby avoiding all the rules about spying on your own people? And everyone, or many people would say, well, it's okay. If, if you've done nothing wrong, you've got nothing to fear. That's kind of changing now, isn't it? Because Cameron's basically saying, doesn't matter what you've done, you've probably got something to fear. Um, you know, that thing you were doing that was okay yesterday is not okay today, but we might not tell you why we're arresting you for it. And yet still, nobody's terrified. And now they're going to try to roll it out. Why do you think governments are moving so fast towards classical authoritarianism? I imagine, and I don't have great experience in government, I'm very pleased to say, uh, once you've got the bit between your teeth and it looks like you can get to the sort of goal you want, why waste time? The quicker you move, like many things in life, you know, with a business opportunity or anything like that, move quick. You know, after careful consideration, when you do move, you move as fast as you can um, to ensure that it happens with as, as little interference like Obama trying to railroad through the TPP um, thing. I, again, I'm just, I'm literally, I'll be talking about this on the Live League show later. The White House can find time to mention Bruce Jenner, for example. Which it should be of no relevance to anyone, what that man does with his own body. And, and we're not against Bruce Jenner. It's, no. just, it's just not... Why are we obsessing on a... St <laughs> Stay with us back in 70 seconds. I want to elaborate on that. Planet Jenner. I mean, th this is not the top story. Trying to start World War III with Russia and China is. Uh, but I tell you, CJ is in there ranting to me during the breaks about Bruce Jenner and uh, what's really behind all this. Uh, and it really made a lot of sense. He's going to talk about that in the next segment, kind of reload and repeat what he just said to me during that 70-second break. But uh, Hayden... You were uh, talking about uh, Bruce Jenner and all this, and why is Obama talking about it when you got cut off by the break? Go ahead. Yeah, well, you know, I understand the cult of celebrity is huge now, and we love what we can laughingly call reality shows. It's massive. It's a huge distraction. People love it. But in truth, there's no reason to care what Bruce Jenner does with his body. It's irrelevant. You know, the, the, the things behind it, that's a different debate. The fact that the White House... The most powerful man in the world, to all intents and purposes, can have a chat about Bruce Jenner. But at no point will clue the American people in on legislation that will affect them for generations. The TPP. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it will England's literally... falling to tyranny. We're falling to tyranny. The whole planet is. And we're talking about a guy that turned into a woman. And they're like, oh, you just don't like that. I don't care. I'm a total well, libertarian. The... But it's like, why am I being force fed? An ugly tranny. I mean, I, I just, I just don't get it. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's a whole another debate that I would love to have with you sometime about people's perceptions and the way we have a completely polarized society now. You either are A or B. Yeah, he's a goddess. She's a goddess. She's an abomination. Nobody's allowed nowadays to take the middle ground and go. Do you know what? Don't care. No, I, I mean, mean that's where I'm at. I, I, I mean, I, I mean that's where I'm at. I mean, yeah, if some guy turned into a woman look like Marilyn Monroe, I'd be like, wow, that guy looks like a good-looking woman. I mean, but it, it's just, it's so weird that it's a creepy Olympic athlete, and, and I can't stand the Kardashians in reality. I just hate it all. It's not that I hate, you know, the Kardashians themselves. I hate the whole spectacle because yeah. it is a distraction from the TPP and everything else. And so distraction from everything, reality TV is, I mean, we don't watch a lot of television in, in my house. It's not a snobbery thing. It's like, you know, once I don't the, either. the kids... I'll, I'll have a chat with the wife, we'll catch up on the day, then, you know, I'll do a bit of reading, she'll potter around the internet. I tend not to potter around on the internet much at home because that's my entire life. Um, but we don't watch a lot of TV, and when we do, I, I, I constantly find myself amazed at just the complete lack of information that's available on television now. It, it's kind of scary. Oh, yeah, once you, you go internet, you can't go back. I mean, I, ne no. I, I never watch television anymore. How can you watch the news? I turned on the, the uh, ITV, which is independent television news here in the UK. I, I turned that on. I had to sit through 20 minutes of FIFA. Yeah. So what? It's corrupt. Big, yeah, no kidding. A huge organization responsible for billions.
billions of hundreds of billions of pounds income is corrupt. No kidding. But why would who didn't know? Now, all right, let us know. Yeah, the soccer association know. is not capturing our countries. <laughs> no, as far as I know, FIFA wouldn't slap an order on me to not speak online without being vetted by a police officer. They might want to. I don't know, but I don't imagine. By the way, what's going to happen to Live Leak if if Cameron actually gets all this through? They're going to put prior restraint on you. You're going to have to move somewhere else. Well, Live Leak isn't. Um, I know it's written on Wikipedia, but we didn't write that because we actually follow the wiki rules. We don't edit anything about our own sure, stuff. Sure, so you're not really based in the UK. No, I'm I'm based in the UK. Live Leak is is a very very unusual organization, in as much as it's a genuine cooperative. Yeah, there's no single head. I just drew the straw that I'm out from talking to people, and you know, because I I enjoy. There's the no head to chop off because there is no head. No, I mean it's you know, it's a very like I say, it's there's no shiny building with chrome. There's no sort of shiny suited investors. There's there's nothing like that. It's a genuine independent entity. Uh, that's why we don't all have Ferraris, monocles, and fur coats. You know. <laughs> Uh, Hold on. I mean, hey, hey, do you have to go, or, or can you do one more segment? I'll do one more segment. All right, all right, great. Uh, Hayden Hewitt, LiveLeak.com. Uh, it, it's a great site. I mean, you want to know where I watch TV. It, it's places like that um, because uh, YouTube's so commercialized and stuff. And I'm not even against people having ads. I mean, we have them too. It's just that I like to go over there because you can find some really interesting, real human stuff at LiveLeak. Stations and platforms. Everybody out there should go start your own LiveLeak.com platform. And then doppelganger videos, put them over on YouTube and somewhere else. Just just reach out, communicate. Doesn't mean you have all the answers. I don't either. I don't care what color you are, or you're a man or a woman, or Caitlyn Jenner, Bruce Jenner, whatever. Hayden Hewitt, LiveLeak.com co-founder, is our guest for the rest of this 12-minute uh, segment. But CJ in the control room, who I always encourage the guys to rant on air when they want to say something, not just tell me during the break, but I guess they don't want to seem uppity. He, he was he really crystallized it. He said, look, you know, it's not about hormones, it's not about agendas, it's not about it's about money. And he really boiled it down in about a sixty second rant uh during a break. So uh, go ahead, CJ. I'll try to paraphrase what I said without paraphrasing too much, but And then cut that, out the cuss words, but just go right, ahead. Nothing too bad. But we know that there's only a shred of or a handful of companies that own all media organizations. Uh Viacom, Disney, News Corp, um, I can go through a list. It's not very big. There's five but, of them. Yeah. So Bruce is on E. He's Chris's husband, basically. He was an Olympian, but he's not in the news. It's not like the tabloids have Bruce all over the place. They've got Kim and Jay-Z and tons of ad revenue based on them. And it turns out Bruce could get 10 grand uh, speaking engagement. But now that he's Caitlin, he's getting upwards of 100 grand and... It's a small price to pay getting a boob job and a sex change, but he's going to be making millions for himself and billions for that handful of corporations. While they sell this idea to everybody just to create more confusion and claim if you don't accept it, you hate them. Well, yeah, you're a monster, a bigot if you don't love Caitlyn and thinks she's the greatest uh, gift to humanity since uh, Kim. And then all over the country, they make you pay for people's sex changes, you're going to see an explosion in this. And really, it's just a revolution of weirdness. It's uh, nothing new. I was saying that uh, Chaz Bono, which was uh, Sonny Bono and Cher's uh, daughter, um, or her son became Chastity. I can't remember which way it was, but it happened almost a decade or more than a decade ago, and it was no big deal. It wasn't like it was a great well, social event. Well, what this really is is an example of how the mainstream media doesn't have the influence it once had in news, but it's still there in entertainment. They still have the big numbers there, and they can just create a new personality. I've seen this guy give interviews with this lady, and it's just super boring. It's like watching paint dry, and, and so they can just take this and then go, oh, how glamorous a goddess worship it. And it looks like a creepy, narcissistic 60-year-old woman. I mean, I don't want to watch a creepy, narcissistic, you know. I mean, I don't sit around reading glamour magazines with, you know. It's just all of It's annoying. And and it's it's the force feeding of this. Thank you, CJ. Anything else you want to add? Well, I was going to add one more point that you have these interviews with people like Diane Sawyer or Oprah. And we had the fallen Lance Armstrong. 
because people looked up to him. And so when he had a failure, a, a major lie, it was devastating to the world. But Bruce is a athlete and nobody really looks up to him as an athlete anymore. But now they look up to him like he's courageous and ESPN's given him a courage award. And there's a female basketball player, I can't remember her name, but she died of cancer and did all this work to raise awareness and money and was completely overlooked. And it's just sad that we live in a society that awards a, some call mental illness, some call um, corporate gold digging with courage awards. Well, that's it. The angle to go here is this is corporate gold digging, geeking out, uh, and it's just over the top. And, and it's part of this full-on assault that's going on. And as our guest said, Hayden Hewitt, a co-founder of LiveLeague.com, this is really a distraction from the TPP and attacks on free speech. Thank you so much, CJ. Great points. All right, Hayden Hewitt, you're very polite. You keep pausing every 30 seconds to have me jump in, which I'll do. The last six, seven minutes we have, you have the floor. Rant about whatever you want. Tell us about shows you're involved. Tell us about LiveLeague.com. Tell us about how you secretly want to have a change into an Easter bunny. I want to be changed into the cow that jumped over the moon. I'm courageous. Pay for my change into a cow. Uh, go ahead. I'm not going to say this is all well and good, but seeing as I've just heard the figures involved, I've just got someone over there ordering me a dress on eBay right now uh, because that's the money that goes around just for, you know, a gender reassignment. I might not go the full thing, but I'm sure, you know, for a few hundred thousand dollars. Exactly. I'm not going to chop right. my uh, my Johnson off, but I could start wearing a dress for a hundred thousand speaking engagement. I could find, I, I would, could have I, a new persona. I wouldn't Chelsea pay Manning. Thousand. I, you know. <laughs> I would pay money to see you in a dress. No, in a kinky way. <laughs> no, I get it. I may actually do it. I'm thinking about it. I, uh... Oh, please. please. <laughs> joke. Um, no, I, I thought about it as a like... gag doing it, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> like... Hillary chopped hers off, and look how much she gets to speak. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's... Uh, I'm sorry. Go well, ahead, you were sir. you lost all this weight. Think about the dress sizes you can squeeze into now, dude. You have a... Exactly. You know? <laughs> See, you're not thinking it through. You've got to think it all the way through. Exactly. Uh, okay, um, other, other stuff. Well, obviously, there's LiveLeague.com, which started out in 2006 at 6 o'clock in the morning. And that's when my whole life went crazy. Uh, it's been an amazing roller coaster. It's 100% it's independent. Um, it, it shouldn't work. It shouldn't work, but it does. It does have rules, but it's, none of those rules are based on opinions or beliefs or anything like that. In that respect, it's as free as it can be. Uh, we do have some rules on language because, as you know, you know, running a site yourself, if you allow certain things, you end up being a site that's just smothered in porn advertising and hate and nothing else. But Live League's something I've just I've been honoured to be involved with for so long. As to other things that we do, we're doing the, we do the Live League show once a week. We're doing it this evening uh, at 10.30 p.m. British summer time. Uh, we do talk about some serious stuff. We will be talking about Bruce Jenner and some other things. Tell but folks the name of the show. It's the Live League show, but it's definitely for 18 years and over. It is absolutely full to the brim of the most disgusting language, <laughs> foul opinions, abuse, trolling from the members. We show some grotesque videos sometimes as well. So it's so just it's, a, a no-holds-bar free-for-all. Yeah, it's, 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 it's disgusting. <laughs> I, I am ashamed of myself. I understand. But uh, it's, it's a good shame. It's, it's <laughs> but we do that. Um, got the media company that's um, slowly but surely getting moving, where we're combining doing corporate media and creative media and supporting people who are passionate about their topic and want to get it out of there. And just, I, I honestly believe that if more people who are capable, and there are lots of us around the world, nothing special. Genuinely, that's not fake pride or anything like that. It's, it's true. If everyone that had these resources devoted just a little bit of their time, a little bit of their energy, be it the filming side, the uploading side, the graphics side, imagine what a group of thousands could do. For, for, for pretty much no investment on a personal basis. I'm not trying to sell anything here. And by the way, you mean outside the cookie cutter. It doesn't even mean we all agree. It's that we're not doing the five-company brainwash dance. We're exactly. doing true it, organic human activity. Could you imagine if the big movers and shakes in alternative news put their heads together on a project and invited 10,000 
um, citizen journalists to do the same. I want to do that. What corporate media could stand up to that? But in truth, totally decentralized, totally on So this is something in my own very small, and it is a very small way, but it's something I'm striving towards being a part of. If I can only influence two other people to try it, well, they can go and influence two people each to try it. And we'll actually have a cool pyramid scheme. Sure. Well, your and sites reach billions. Uh, you know, just on YouTube, we've reached billions. And then other platforms. I mean, look, I'm, I'm nothing that special at the end of the day, except that I have the, the, the will to take action. I've had a huge effect. And I, and I get what you're saying. You've seen the effect you've had. There's the thrill of seeing other fellow humans do amazing trailblazing things, innovation. You're saying, folks, get off the bench. Successful people especially get involved in the culture war. Yeah, I mean, one of the things like that, that I'm sure, Richie, when we're talking, because it's an open business model that we've started, what we do to protect everyone is my company and the people we work with form a new company where everyone's partners. So as they push it and strive and push that vehicle, a media vehicle forward, and it does earn some money, they get the chunk of it. And it's this openness and fairness that we could do without the corporate sort of horrible slimy screw everyone atmosphere you know screw the little man and screw the talent the predatory bs it doesn't have to be that way it's not i know it sounds kind of hippie no it's a win-win that's how that's my entire philosophy i won't do somebody uh wrong even if they're doing bad to me unless i absolutely have to do it to survive and i treat everybody like i want to be treated it's the golden rule and that's what made civilization this predatory globalist model is going out. I mean, right as it crests, it's coming to its end. Hayden Hewitt, LiveLeak.com. Thank you so much for the time. I look forward to having you back on soon. And I hope we can get on the phone sometime and talk about working together. And I appreciate your support with our channels on LiveLeak, sir. No problem, sir. It's been my pleasure, and I'll speak to you soon. Great Take job. Care.